Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video I want to talk about the violin maintenance and handling. There are some rules which I always tell my students in the first lesson for the handling of the instrument that are important to know and to keep in mind so that nothing on the instrument gets damaged in the process of handling the violin. So at first I want, I want you to hold your violin always here at the neck. So when you get the violin out of your case always hold it at the neck. Do not touch the bridge of the violin and try to handle the violin at the bridge. You can hold the violin with both hands also at the violin body, but it's always more secure to hold it at the neck with the left hand as we would when we play as well. The second rule is always put your violin in the case. Also, if you have a dedicated practicing room, always put your violin in the case and close the case after practicing. Maybe you have a cat or a dog or, a, or small children. You would never want to risk that something touches your violin and the violin could potentially fall. And if the case is open, there can be a major damage. And if the case is always closed, there will be most likely no damage at all. So every time you don't practice, you put your violin in your violin case and also you close the violin case. The same goes with putting the violin on a chair. If the violin is not in a case, you would never want to put the violin on a chair, like this, for example, because chairs are there to sit on them. And sometimes people tend to not look so closely and that can happen to you too, if you want to sit down and you forget that your violin is there. I have seen that cases. And also I have seen cases where someone walks by the chair touches the scroll of the violin and the violin falls down on the ground. In that case, it can happen that your instrument will have a major damage. I will now show you how to attach the shoulder rest to the violin. If you play with the shoulder rest, usually the side, which is more broad, will be sitting on the side of your chin rest. At first, I will always suggest to hold your violin under the arm, put the scroll under your arm and hold your violin like this. Now you take the bigger side of the shoulder rest, attach the foot right there and hold it in place with the left arm and with the left hand. And then on the other side with the right hand you are free to move like this up. In the end your shoulder rest should be approximately in the middle where the violin body is the biggest. You can adjust the position a little bit to your liking. That can be also very individual. Of course, we already talked about the handling of the bow regarding the tightening and the loosening of the hair. I will repeat that in this video as well. So always when we want to take our bow out of the case, be careful to pull it sideways out of the case and then towards you. Then we tighten the bow carefully until approximately your little finger fits between the hair and the stick of the bow. We will always need to remain the shape of the bow like this, so slightly curved to the middle. If the bow is straight or even curved like this, then we have to loosen the tension a little bit. But if you follow the rule of the small finger, the little finger between the stick and the hair, then you are very safe to not tighten your bow too much. You can tighten your bow a little bit more or a little bit less regarding the quality and flexibility of the bow. When we don't play, we want to loosen our bow here, turn the screw counterclockwise to loosen the hair of the bow. Do this until you can see the hair separates right here in the middle and it, it's a little bit of loose. In that position, we will put our bow back in the violin case where it should rest always when we don't play. One very important thing about the violin and a place where we have to be very careful is the violin bridge. We want our violin always to rest in the case with the bridge up and there's no pressure on the bridge. So what you want to do, even if the violin is in the violin case, keep in mind the position of the violin and never place your violin, for example, in a car, if you drive with a car and you put your violin in the, in the trunk, and if it's placed like this, you can damage your bridge when you drive over a bump. And when the violin is always placed like this in the case, and the case is turned correctly in the car as well, so you are safe that the bridge will not be damaged. Also, what you want to keep in mind is 
that you place your violin case never in the direct sunlight. Every extreme temperature is not good for the wood of the instrument. The same goes for extreme temperature changes. Avoid leaving your violin in the hot summer in your car. The same goes for the cold winter. Avoid placing your violin in the direct sunlight, even if it's in your room. Avoid placing it near the heater, because all those things can lead to cracks in the wood and also to the pegs loosening up because of the different density of the wood at the violin peg box and the pegs. Every time we play on our violin, we have some violin rosin dust building up on the strings right here and also under the strings on the wood. So what you want to do after each session, we want to clean our violin with a dry cloth. We can clean the wood under the strings very carefully, not bumping into the bridge. And also what we want to do, we can clean our strings and also the fingerboard and the strings at the fingerboard. I would recommend to you to do that every time you practice because the dust of the rosin can build up at the wood right here, which is not good for the vibration of the instrument. And the same goes for the strings. If the violin rosin builds up on the strings, the quality of sound you get out of your strings will deteriorate quite quickly. So if you clean your strings every time you use them, your strings will have a much longer life and sound better. For cleaning the strings and the strings and the fingerboard only, you can also use some cleaning alcohol or some eau de cologne. The same goes for the bow. We can clean the bow stick with our dry cloth like this. We want to clean the stick of the bow from the violin resin dust. So that's it for my basic handling and maintenance tips. I hope I prolonged the life of your violin and prevented some cracks in the wood of your violin. In the next video of this beginner series, I will talk about the violin hold. So stay tuned and see you in the next one.